Welcome to today's training on how to create control charts. Control charts help show you what things are in control, as indicated by these green circles, and what things are out of control, as illustrated by these red circles. They're used in a variety of industries such as manufacturing, health care, and websites. For instance, say you own a pom-pom factory and you notice that some of your pom-poms are defective and some are looking more like bowling balls than pom-poms. You notice this rise a couple days ago and you aren't quite sure if you're just imagining things or this is a significant change and problem. Or for instance, say you own a hospital and you notice lately that patient wait times at noon have spiked considerably in the last couple months. You wonder why they've spiked. Say you own a website and you notice that some of your web pages have had dramatically reduced page views over the last few days. Do the search engines change their optimization techniques? Control charts allow you to monitor such things as defects or problems over time and see if they fall outside the statistical processes and norms. This is commonly used in an approach called Six Sigma. Control charts have a concept of upper control limits, as illustrated by this red line here, and lower control limits, illustrated by this red line here. In this example, we're going to use just the concept of standard deviations to analyze a control chart, but keep in mind that you can use a variety of techniques to create a variety of different types of control charts. If you open up your companion workbook, you'll see a few other types of control charts provided for you. For instance, you can see here we have a NP chart, and you can also see a P chart, a U chart, an X bar chart, an R chart, an X bar and R chart, and an X bar and R dashboard, all inclu included in your guided companion workbook. But today, for ease of use, we'll go ahead and use Superstore and a concept that's familiar to most people known as standard deviations. Let's go ahead and create a new sheet. We're going to first create what is this basic control chart here. So say we have sales over time, maybe broken down by month, and I want to see what things fall three standard deviations away from the mean. To do that, I can right click on this axis and add a reference line. Perhaps we just want an average right now. I'll go ahead and make this maybe a purple dashed line. Say OK. So that's our average. And then we want to see three standard deviations above and below the mean, or the average in this case. So I'll just go ahead and add another reference line, choose distribution, and choose something like standard deviation. And we can choose something like minus 3 plus 3. And then I'll say uh, maybe I don't want any fill. Maybe we want a nice dotted red line. We can see that only one datum lies outside of our control. Great, but what if we wanted to look a little bit more sophisticated? What if we want to have uh, these bars that can be manipulated? So these standard deviations can be manipulated and to have these little colors on each of the points so we can easily visibly see which data are inside and outside of control. Well, let's go ahead and call this our basic control chart. And let's go ahead and create a new chart similar to that advanced control chart that we just manipulated. I'll go ahead and switch to this data set here. And let's begin. The process for creating an advanced control chart is very similar to what we just did with the basic control chart. Essentially, we can take order date, drop it on the column shelf, change it to month, take sales, drop it on the rows shelf, and now we want to add, say, an average line. To create an average line, we could always right click, add a reference line, and say OK. But there's another way to add an average line as well. And we'll just take a simple step here, go to analysis, and create a calculated field. Now it should be noted, each of these points on the graph, this is the sum of sales in that one specific month. I believe it's uh, just before 2009. 
And then here is the sum of sales in uh, the January 2009, February, March, April, May, June. So it's summing up all the sales. So we want the average line for all these months, which is each month is a sum of sales. So keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and call this our average line. And that's just going to be our window average of each of our sum of sales. So a window average is taking the average of everything in this window. And each of these points is a sum of sale. That's why we're taking a window average of a sum of sales. We can now say OK. Let's go ahead and take that average line and drag it out to the detail shelf. And now I can right click, add reference line. And we can just take that new uh, average line that we just created, maybe make that a nice purple dashed line, and say OK. Maybe I don't want to have the label there. I can remove that. Now, what if I want to add the upper control limits and the lower control limits? Well, that's another easy equation. We'll just go up to Analysis and create a calculated field. It will just call us the upper control limit, or UCL for short. And the upper control limit is simply our average line plus a standard deviation of the sum of sales. So that's our upper control limit. Let's go ahead and say OK. And now we have that UCL. Let's go ahead and duplicate it and create our lower control limit. So we'll just go ahead and call this lower control limit. And that's just uh, the average line minus one standard deviation. Okay, So we'll say OK. And now we have that upper control limit, which we can add to this level of detail shelf. And we also have that lower control limit. Now, let's go ahead and add those to the view. All we have to do is add a reference line. Go to banding here. You could also add them as a line, but I'm just going to choose banding. And we're going to choose our lower control limit and our upper control limit. I don't want any labels, so I'll just remove those. And we'll add some nice little lines, maybe a red dashed line here. And let's go ahead and select apply. And then OK. So now we can see we have this nice uh, general control chart. But what if we want to color these points on the outside? Well, we can add another sales here. We're going to use Tableau's ability to have different types of marks on the top and on the bottom. I'm just, and then here on this chart, I'm going to go ahead and remove the lower control limit, the upper control limit, and the average line, and maybe change it into circles. And we want to color each of these circles, whether or not they're inside or outside of these control limits. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, make this a dual axis. So now these circles are on top. And we can size those circles if we want to, to be a little bit smaller. There we go. And we want to synchronize these axes. So let's go ahead and create a KPI to color these circles. We'll just go back up to Analysis and create a calculated field. We're just going to go ahead and call this field our KPI. And it's going to be a simple uh, if statement in this case, just for clarity's sake. So if our sum of sales, so if a point, and all these points again are a sum of sales, so sum of sales, sum of sales, sum of sale. If a specific sum of sales is greater than our upper control limit, or our specific sum of sales is less than our lower control limit, then out of control. Else in control. And so now we have this nice little equation. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now when I drag this KPI to our color shelf, 
you notice I accidentally dragged it to the line. But if we drag it onto the circles here, color shelf, you can see what's in control and out of control. And we can double click on this color shelf to make this red, make that green, maybe add some borders to this. Great. But what if I want to be able to define how many standard deviations away I am? Right now we're looking at plus one, minus one standard deviations. Well, to do that, we can go back into these upper and lower control equations here. And we can see this is one times uh, the window standard deviation. It's just assuming a one there. But we could always make it a two times, or a three times, or four times, what have you. So maybe we'll just do a three times, for instance, here. Say OK. You can suddenly see this extrapolates out to a pretty impossible number. So we can actually add our own numbers in there, or we can prompt our user to add a number. If we edit this equation, instead of adding a two times standard deviation or something like that, we can add a parameter. And we can call this choose your standard deviations. Okay, And we can just choose a range from 0 to 5 with a step of 0.1. So now we have this nice parameter. And the user will be prompted with this ability. So now they can use this nice little parameter here. So we're going to have that for the upper control limit. And we're also going to have that for the lower control limit as well. Okay. So now we can go down here and you can see we have this nice choose your parameter or choose your standard deviations. If we right click on that and show this parameter control, you now see as we toggle this, things are going in and out of control. Again, if you want to learn some more complex uh, control charts, this is just a basic demonstration for a basic understanding. But in your companion guidebook, you will have this more sophisticated control chart uh, available to you. So you can have an NP chart or a P chart or a U chart. Uh, and a variety of other ones. So this is just kind of more or less a launching pad for you to kind of make your own discoveries on how you can create your own control charts for your specific industry. We hope that this was a helpful tutorial for you. Have a wonderful day.